Ouch. Oh, happy Thursday. It's gorgeous outside. It is, man. I've been on Code Red since Tuesday, thanks to Fox Local. <laughs> it was, remember, it, we, uh, Tuesday was absolutely beautiful, but they started oh, the man. morning with Code Red. What's coming yeah. our way? And this was it, I think. It was a windy... I think it is, yeah. It's windy and rainy and storms today. It held off yesterday, and yesterday actually ended up being a pretty nice day. Uh, windy, but nice. But yeah, Tuesday, I think, was was just a that prototypical perfect fall day. Yeah. Uh, and your uh, two favorite hosts of the Crushing Iron Triathlon podcast took out the old mountain bikes on Tuesday. <laughs> Did we ever? Uh, for a little off-site meeting. Uh, we'll probably get into that a little bit of that uh, here in a little bit. But thanks for joining us. As we said, this is the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast, episode somewhere in the 200s. Uh, 210, two, I think. 212. 212. Look at me, always underselling, over delivering, usually, <laughs> sometimes, once a month. Um, we come to you every Monday and Thursday, and we cover a wide variety of topics in no particular order, uh, which. I have to say, I appreciate the feedback we got uh, on the last podcast, especially the three-headed triathlete or the three-headed athlete. Um, we got a lot of good responses and some posts uh, with feedback on our Crushing Iron closed Facebook group. Uh, which, if you're interested in becoming part of that conversation and a good community with a lot of good people and good insight and and uh, no judgment, but some sarcasm. Uh, you can uh, j- request to join that on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, we uh, really enjoyed doing that one, and it was good to see that we got uh, at least some some good feedback. And is it just me, or were people asking for even less structure? No, I don't think they were asking that. <laughs> well, I was, uh, I don't think, that's what I, I was I reading in there. I don't know that we can. I don't know that we can go any more unstructured. Oh, I think we can. Well, we're always uh, we're always trying to find out new ways to do new things. Uh, uh, you know, you <laughs> well, know, we're we really have... trying to disrupt the market. <laughs> yeah, that's just it, right? You no, know, that's what I actually thought about that a little bit. Like that ridiculous term people use, like how we're going to disrupt the industry. We're industry disruptors. Yeah. Like you know, you know what would have been an industry disruptor? Hmm. Last night, if Girl Scouts went door to door. doing the reverse you think you're gonna give me candy and i'm gonna ask you to sell me to let me sell you some candy that would be outstanding man if you're out there and you're a troop leader uh brownies or girl scouts or whatever they call them these days uh, i'm sure they like had to change names for whatever reason to be for sure they did Um, no i think there's i don't know you know whatever whatever they call them brownies girl scouts whatever you want to call them chocolate chips uh Next Halloween, if you want to get in on a little, uh, you know, disruption of the market and go door to door and get a little pre-sell on some tagalongs or some trefoils or some, uh, you know, other good stuff, I say we we get a band together, we go door to door, and we set the we set a Girl Scout record because people are at home. You know, when they're going to be at home, they're going to be handing out candy, they're going to be in a good mood, they're going to be in a good spirit, they're coming up dressed up as Girl yeah. Scouts, ready to take things over. Yeah. But anyway, no, uh, it's it's good, get, especially if uh, we can get back to structure. If you can convince them to, um, you know, sell in like smaller packages, yeah, so they can just redistribute later in the evening. You buy, and then you put them back in the kid, you know. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. You're buying, and then you're giving them back. Right. And you know, you may have some, you may have some, uh, some last minute. You know, parents or adults that really did a, a just a terrible job of preparing for Halloween, Which, and yeah. they feel bad for not answering the door. And you can be like, "Hey, look, I, I can." It, it's like it's like Girl Scout Uber Eats. <laughs> That's not bad at all, man. It's not okay. We'll, we'll talk about That's this off here. I don't want I don't want anybody to steal our idea. Well, um, yeah, we don't. But, I mean, what are we gonna do? That's true. Yeah, we'll. we'll just, Someone will just send this to the new uh, president of the Girl Scout. Uh, yeah, and then next year we'll see it implemented. Next thing I'm gonna say is like, uh, we'll see like an update on Twitter. Be like, Girl Scout CEO says new sales period begins October 31st, 2020. Like, <laughs> that was us. That was us. Uh, but yeah, we, you and I headed out on the mountain bikes. On By the Tuesday. way, I shut the the lights down last night. 
I was that okay. guy. I was the neighbor. I, I knew that. You did? I knew that. I, what do you mean, did I know that? I mean, you're not anti-kid by any stretch of the imagination. No, no. I'm anti-teenager. That's all we get around you're here. You're anti-teenager. But... They don't even dress up. They just come by and like, look well, yeah, straight, uh, a, yeah. you know, kind of like loops. scout your house out from the outdoors. Like, hmm, that's not bad. That TV there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in your part of town, they might. <laughs> You know, I, I figured you were the I figured you were a lights off guy. Yeah. I mean that you know dim zero porch light. Um, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm ha- Halloween's probably my least favorite holiday. <laughs> How can it be your least uh, of any? I just don't. I just I don't know. I don't get the point. I'm not a big dress up guy. I know that, that you might find that shocking. Uh, yeah. I've just never, even when I was a kid, just not a big fan. Hmm. I've never been a fan of Halloween. You but just want to be yourself, man. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I, listen, I got, enough, I got enough scary issues with myself to, like, not have to dress up on Halloween. But we did our Halloween thing, and we, uh, Hayden didn't really do much of the trick-or-treat, and we just sat on the front porch and, and handed out candy. And I'm telling you, some of these kids are ruthless. Are they? You gotta have a, you gotta have thick skin on Halloween. Mm. I mean, some girl, so one girl was digging through. She's like, mm-hmm, 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 mm. It's just all the same stuff. <laughs> I was like, man, what were you expecting? Of course, you know, Allie, she did, you know, she went above and beyond with being in the in the medical field. You know, we had our, we did offer like non-food treats for people who have, you know, allergies. Um, so we had like, you know, she likes to make flyers. So we had like 19 flyers on our mailbox and our pa- pa- our patio and our columns in our front. It was like, you know, we have these non-traditional. We had like Play-Doh and stickers and stuff like that to hand out for kids that, you know, didn't want to. But, man, some of these kids were ruthless in judging what you had to offer. Uh, and I have to say that Play-Doh was a clear winner. Mm. Uh, I mean, we didn't offer really extravagant candy. Um Really, we just pick the candy that we don't want people to get that we know we like, so we can have good leftovers. But we did offer the play doh, and that seemed to be a pretty a pretty big hit. It was a play doh sold out. That's all I gotta say. Play doh sold out. We had to go back inside for reinforcements, and one little girl, I think dressed up as a princess, waited for like five minutes for Allie to go back inside and find more more play doh. Uh, yeah, more play doh for the and the rest of her her trick or treat gang went down the block but uh yeah that I, that didn't surprise me you were you were a lights off guy i wonder if the original plato sold out you know maybe like his speeches the philosopher because yeah, well you know <laughs> anyway sure. man uh that, that, that was a <laughs> that was a kind of a weird attempt at no structure but hey what's yeah. on your mind today besides the sore I'm st- I'm a little sore. Still? Still from... Well, I went back out yesterday. So, you know, we... Like I said, Mike and I took our mountain bikes out yesterday. I got a mountain bike two weeks ago, and I'd taken it out once. And uh, was hitting up some Percy Warner trails uh, here in Nashville and invited Mike to tag along, knowing that it would be, A, it'd be a good time anyway, but... Mike's had plenty of experience mountain biking, and I figured it'd be good to go with somebody who could kind of lead the way. Um, and I just got to say, he led with reckless abandon. <laughs> uh, I mean, he went fearless. It was an absolute blast and also terrifying all at the same time to go on the first time. Uh, <laughs> they labeled it a, what I would say is a beginner trail, and it sure as hell didn't feel like beginner. Uh but we went flying and I loved it. I bit it once hard, uh, once pretty good. Um, but got back up and of course Mike was long gone. He didn't care that I fell. Um, oh, I totally was coming back. Yeah, you definitely weren't. Uh, <laughs> but no, it was it was an absolute great time. And then I went back out yesterday for a little bit. Um, and boy, am I sore in places I didn't. Yeah, I haven't been sore in a while. It's full body, man. It that- is full, full body. That's what I always try to tell people. Like whenever when I first started getting into triathlon, I I really just did not understand what we were doing here with the bike part, because it was so uh, restrictive to me that it became drudgery. You know, I I really took a long, long, long time to um, get into TT riding, and 
even still, I mean, I had to at some point kind of shift my mindset into this, like, okay, you're just really, you know, it's really like this weightlifting exercise, or, you know, like this constant thing that's good for you. Mm-hmm. It's going to work. You have to do it. It's it's very hard. I had to get into that that mindset versus like, hey, we're going bike riding because it just never felt yeah. like bike riding to me. Yeah, it is, and it, it's honestly. I mean, I've you know we talked about this a little bit once we got off the trail and and hit the the hilly five eight there in Percy Warner, but you know I've always been I've always been a little hesitant, not a little hesitant, totally hesitant to get a mountain bike and do and take on like any. I mean, yeah, there's like straight, there's like, you know, straight up single track that you can hop on that's with like, you know, no rocks and roots and stuff like that. That's safe, you know, um, which to be honest is what I anticipated us encountering on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> there's a few and, rock, rocks and roots. Yeah, there were quite, quite a few uh, rocks and roots, but. No real um, jumps, though. No, no, no jumps. Uh, but it was like, well, what, what, what if I get hurt? Mm-hmm. You know, like it's going to ruin my season or whatever. And I, a couple weeks ago, I was like thinking about how much, you know, because now they're with, you know, cars, you know, and, and the world that we live in where there's, it just seems that you hear more and more of these bad experiences with on the road with cyclists and cars, whether it's just a bad experience or it's a legit awful experience with an injury or even sometimes the death of a friend or somebody you know uh through the you know cycling or triathlon community that a lot of people are just taking 90 percent of their training indoors um you know in their in their their indoors and inside 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 um and you know and and i'll be honest i think i think it's fair to give triathletes a fair assessment of being not all of them being poor bike handlers, but I would say a lot of them subpar mm-hmm. uh, bike handlers just because of the, the nature of their training and how they ride when they go out to ride. And then also the race courses are generally not super demanding. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also can kind of lull you into laziness, uh, like a mentally lazy. But so I just kind of never did it. And then I just got thinking like, man, I just I want to get outside. Like I want to be able to, I want to do things that I haven't done before. I want to hit some trails. I would like to learn something new. I love to work on my handling. I'd love a, a different experience. I know mountain biking is a great workout, um, you know, and especially in terms of, and, and it's it's great this time of year too to work on like that really short high power, but also to work on, you know, smoothing out any kind of cadence issues you have. And mountain biking will 100% totally do that. Um, you have to be on it. Uh, big gearing it or super high cadence all the time, uh, and it's I, I see a lot of benefit in, in getting logging those miles. So, went and got it, and just kind of had to have a serious talk with myself. Like, who cares? You know, if I get hurt, I get hurt. Like, you know, like I was joking with you. Like, it's not like I'm, you know, uh, Peyton Manning who needs to go out and get insurance on their right arm that you know for a couple million dollars in case something happens to me. It's like. Uh, I do this for like a hobby. I don't make any money off this. Like, I could do it for fun. So why not go out and do things that are fun? And the other part of it, I think, when we talked about this a little bit too, is when I went and got this bike, the guy that I bought it from is a really, really good guy. Great. Uh, he has a great bike shop here close to town, Ride 615. And he was like, yeah, you probably want this kind of bike because you, because triathletes like to go fast, mm-hmm. which which I think is a fair assessment, you know, for, for the majority of triathletes. And, and I said, you know, I, I said, honestly, like, yeah, it's going fast, you know, fun. I think sometimes I'm sure it is, but I like to go hard and just work hard and whatever that looks like. I just like the feeling that going hard gives you and man, mountain biking qualifies, uh, uh, I was I was looking at my heart rate graph after we did it, and I don't think I've hit that on the bike in I don't even know how long. Uh, oh, seriously? Yeah, I mean, I think I was up at like almost 180. That was uh, just all shit and bricks. Yeah, it probably, probably could have been. It was probably just like me not breathing for two and a half minutes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but no, it was it was Wim great. Hof in motion, huh? Exactly. Yeah, but no, it was awesome, and uh, you know. It's uh, I think it's a it's a great time of year to do it or to take it up. I'm not telling everyone to go out and get a mountain bike and go hit every trail they can find. Um, 
but I, you know, I would say it's something to explore, to enjoy yourself, and get outside and and work on a variety of, of skills that are often because you know I think honestly the thing with that I I did like 30, 40 minutes yesterday. I was by myself, but I think one of the most overlooked part of mountain biking and getting into it might be is the uh, is the how on it you have to be the entire time. Like you, you can't get lazy and just be like, oh, I'm going to coast and oh, I'm going to daydream and think about this and think about that. Oh, but I think I'll just change my iPod. Bam, tree. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be mentally on it, and it's it's mentally I think tiring because you have to be your mental acuity has to be at its apex the entire time, always thinking, always adjusting, thinking ahead of time, or things aren't going to go bad. And I think in triathlon, that's that's the reason, I think, for so many accidents on race courses is not that people are traditionally just bad bike handlers. It's just they get lulled and lazied into that, I'm just on my tri-bike pedaling without always having that like sense of awareness that I that you need to have around you anytime you're on the open road surrounded by cars or cyclists. I think that's fair, man. Uh it is I always talked about mountain bike. You're making hundreds of decisions the whole time. You're looking at, you know, roots and rocks and trees and sticks and, you know, animals and who knows what, you know, gravel and what gear you need there's always something going on and you're always steering that was the other thing i was talking about it's like you really are steering like the whole time versus you know some kind of iron man course where you're just literally an arrow for 50 straight miles or whatever Mm -hmm. and it does it passes for me it's that's what makes it more enjoyable because you're not it's very difficult to i don't know man it's i mean the meditation part of the of being on a TT bike for that kind of long can be there, but you definitely will lose focus. And I think that, uh, I don't know if it's just the fact that you practice that kind of stuff on mountain bikes, you're just doing that stuff all the time. I'm always thinking like that, even on a, in the Ironman race or whatever it is. I just think that way. I'm always looking ahead, you know, I'm looking for something that could be t- uh, potentially coming out of the bushes or. Uh, yeah, your, your anticipation is on a whole different level. Right. Yeah. You know, I, think I think that's think it's, yeah, it's natural for you because that's that's what you started with. Mhm. That is one thing I'll notice too with people when I'm riding uh that you know maybe not be the most experienced on in triathlon or even on a bike or whatever is they will you know they come with the talking part when we start talking they'll just start looking at you and start talking mm-hmm. <laughs> like hey, yeah. watch the road. <laughs> it just drives me crazy because I mean, even on a regular road, like something safer, like Natchez Trace or whatever, there's just stuff going on all the time. And uh, to me, that's just it. It's just you got to be thinking ahead. And yeah, your anticipation is is a huge part of. Well, it's it's the. I think it's also, and I think the other reason, and you kind of alluded to this, was that it's the ultimate disconnect by connecting, because. When you know when you and I go out and we we go on the lab or to go on the trace or you're on these rides, like you can you can look down at your device whenever the hell you want. You can and, and that's and you'll see people. I mean, I think we were watching, or maybe it was I was with Phil. We were watching the Kona coverage in Louisville, and I was like, how long they like like I think we were watching Starkey, and he was in lead, and he had his head down, staring at his GPS unit. We counted. I think it was like for 13 to 14 seconds at a time, and then would just kind of glance up and put his head back down. Oh yeah. Um, obviously, you can do that on a course like like Kona because you had these long, long, long straightaways, and he also knew that nobody was in front of him. So, so I get that, but I think that's also something that that athletes do is they get so they get so obsessed with you know think think of the athlete that goes for a run how many times they look at their watch. You know, and then you put them on a bike going 20, 25 miles an hour, and they still have that same habit. They still, it's they, it's not just running that you have that habit to. It's also cycling. You look down, you look down, you look down, and then you get in this trance. And next thing you know, like you're not a, you're not assessing what's going on around you or what's about to happen. On a mountain bike, you you can have a head unit, but you're never going to look at it <laughs> until you're until you're stopped. Um, or you, you know, you peel off and like take a rest. You're never going to look at it because you can't. You have yeah. to have 
you have to have your eyes up. You have to be anticipating it. I mean, I, th- I, I know I've learned more in the last like two weeks about certain things in terms of you know mountain biking than I ever thought I would. But I am I'm looking forward to it, continuing to incorporate it into uh, my training over the the rest of the fall and even in, hopefully into the winter. Mm. Yeah, and for me, the one thing about it is the full body part like we were talking about and and it's just that flexibility piece and that overall strength piece and i just think that um it's mountain biking and it's trail running you know too and i was just trying to think of you know because if we're starting to talk about mountain biking here and you know get behind it and all this stuff. Now, that may not be for everybody, but I think trail trail running, just it's the same sort of thing. You have to be watching where you're going. You have to be on point and you got to, your, your joints and tendons and stuff like that are getting a little bit more of a well-rounded workout. And I think that was what I meant by mountain bike because it was weird because my um, back, like upper back was sore. Mm-hmm after riding my bike it wasn't my legs really it was and we were talking about why that is because you have to use your arms as shock absorbers while you're riding through all that stuff and your kind of your body has to be flowing and moving it is almost a dance um versus just riding down a road the whole time so that, to me, that's why I love it so much is because it, it does really, I really think it makes you functionally stronger. Oh, it, it 100% does. I mean, I, I can feel, and, and, you've, and, you, and you'll see the majority of pro triathletes take, take to mountain biking during the fall and winter months a lot. They do? If not, if not ex- oh yeah, if not, ex- if not exclusively. Yeah. Um. You know, it's it's a it's a different kind of muscle work, and but I do think, and I mean, that's that it is it's it's a durability thing. I mean, you have to be durable to do it. But the same thing goes for trail running. You know, a lot of people think they're going to get hurt trail running, which I don't I don't understand the the premise behind that. Like, I think something that you need to understand if you've never done any kind of trail running period is that guess what, you're going to be slower. <laughs> like whatever your road pace is, uh, go ahead and add like a minute to two minute per mile pace difference depending on the terrain. It's just you, you just can't get in a groove. You got to be quick. You got to obviously you can't shuffle. You have to lift up your feet. Um, it is a blast, but boy, will it leave you like if you go race it, will it will you hurt? Um, you know, we did that one. We did that one last year. You, uh, you and CC and I, and God, I was wrecked for like a week after. Uh, I mean, I raced it, but it was a uh, boy. Was I boy? Was I hurting for certain? Um, but yeah. it is. It's 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 just a. It's in, even. But the 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 intent is to not to go race these things. The intent is to put yourself in situations where you need to strengthen yourself and strengthen your core. And, you know, we always revert back to creating a durable chassis and making yourself strong to withstand the demands of the year and the season and racing. And um, and so many times, too, like when you have athletes, I'm like, hey, how sore are you? I'm sore in places I didn't even know I ex- existed after regular races. You know, and you have to wonder, like, did, did the structural component of what houses – these ligaments and tendons and muscles like the fraying of those and the weakening of those like it obviously makes a difference on what you're on what you're able to use and how well you're able to use it you know especially going into like longer distance 70.3 full ironman stuff like you break down so you can't hold form but what if you could hold form how much faster would you be and is holding form uh a speed thing no it's a strength thing and durability thing and and that's the other thing that that trail running or just simply running slower to and taking on more hills will do is it just like don't don't go out and try to pound it like go out and try to embrace the terrain and run with it not run against it and that will obviously slow you down but you will begin to work like some of those different muscles and muscle groups that you've probably totally neglected if you've been 
strictly on the treadmill or you've been you know uh, running only flat things like your you know your hamstrings your you know the lower part of your quads probably from downhills and your glutes will start to feel totally different having engaged these muscles but your your body in general has to become a much different you kind of alluded to like the shock absorbing thing with the arms on mountain biking but it's also for anything you're doing like that your body has to your body will adapt to withstand the pounding the same as it does with the um, the demands with speed and anaerobic work with blood and oxygen and the increase it it will take uh to those muscles the next time they work and it's all different but it all works together you know it's like you that's why you can't totally ignore one system and and expect the other system to just overcome your negligence in just pretending like it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of scientific discussion about this that I don't understand. But what I do feel like I understand is that when you're doing things like mountain biking, trail running, and what have you, the soreness, is, at least initially, will be so much different than when you when you're running a flat uh, road or riding a flat long long ride or something like that that type of soreness to me is almost like when i when i start to edit video for a long period of time and i get my uh shoulder gets sore or back gets sore from uh moving my mouse you know it's mm. sort of like a this very little variation kind of like constant sort of grinding on the same, you know, tension, more f- tension-filled uh, soreness more than than actual that. When you're a kid, you know that, that or when you started lifting when you were younger and you're like sore and it was like, it's a great, yeah, that's a, it's a good sore. You remember that? Mm-hmm. You always used to talk about that. I feel like oh, more and yeah. more I get these sorenesses that are not good sores. Uh, they're more like that back tension or like my neck hurts or you know what i mean it's not that muscle that body soreness that you knew was a good thing that meant your muscles were growing it's more of this oh, i've had my head in this weird position all day or <laughs> yeah you're you know what i mean is that's that's kind of that and it's weird because that's why i got into triathlon it was to get more of that well-roundedness you know when i started running all I was doing was running, and I had all these running pains, you know, that were mm-hmm. ankles. They were that you, everyone's probably had them, and you know what they know. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you run too much, and then all of a sudden you just you're limping all the time. All I'm like, I need more well-roundedness, so I'm getting into triathlon. And then it was like a whole new world opened up for me, and it was amazing. And I was swimming, and I was doing all these different body things. I'm full body now, and now I'm starting to realize, wow, there's another level, you know. Mm-hmm. You can take it's, it's a it's multi level yeah multi level marketing multi level marketing multi level triathlete <laughs> yeah. but you know what I'm saying so it's like what yeah it's like sort of brand now we we're gonna we're gonna open up this running and this biking and maybe what what's the swimming alternative maybe it is open water more often or something but you know what I mean so that that's what is exciting in the in the overall whole health perspective kind of that well-rounded body Mm -hmm. is which i think maybe maybe sometimes i'm just going to throw it out there but that might be part of the reason sometimes people may kind of walk away from triathlon is because man i I just don't feel always like i think i should you know and they get in a groove or a rut you need to be and i think this is in this we've alluded to this before i think i that a lot of people get deterred from certain aspects of strength training or things that they think might increase their durability or um, becoming stronger and increasing muscle mass and stuff like that because they're more concerned with looking like a triathlete, quote unquote, than being the best one they possibly can. Uh, uh, and, and you see this with runners, and I, I've seen it for a long time, especially when I used to work for. Uh, a gym like we i would see and work with that so i'm like i'm like you like you need to gain weight like you're like i i know there's this huge like and and, and it's totally a society driven uh view 
is that skinny means healthy. Mm-hmm. Skinny does not mean healthy. Oh, I know it's a yeah. Like it's a, it's total it's total horseshit. Like, and you see it all the time. I mean, I you know I'll be hating on Nashville a bit, but you see it all the time in Nashville with like I'm like sometimes looking around I'm like 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 man, eat a sandwich. Um, but it's just like it's just not healthy. But you but to be strong, like it's what you can do with the body you have, not the way that it looks and what you think it looks like it like it's appealing it's 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 appealing versus what my body can functionally do and runners a lot of runners i found the past two come from this just honest they're so obsessed and concerned about body weight and it it's it's obviously it's a much much difficult and a harder conversation with women uh but traveling to the same it's like you know you it's it's there's so much miscommunication with between some coaches too and even athletes and articles you'll read and the people you see and you it's funny because like even myself when i first got into the sport i would look at somebody and think oh dude i bet they're fast oh because they were skinnier than i was Mm -hmm. or because they they had a six-pack it doesn't mean anything you know, and that's why that's why the sport is so great because you see all these different ages and sexes and and weights and shapes and sizes and diversity levels and athletic backgrounds and whatever. And you you couldn't even if you wanted to place like how good or not good a person's going to be. You know, it's just it's that it's that total stereotype. But that athletes will revert because I I don't man I don't want to put on too much muscle because I don't get bigger and, and then and then I'm going to weigh too much and I can't run as fast. I'm like God, that's like so not true but people are afraid again and i think fear is like the under underlying part of this it's like that's just it's total fear the same the same way that a person who might weigh 105 pounds but if they're not strong enough they often get injured because they just because they don't take in the right supplements they don't take in enough nutrients they don't strengthen their tendons and ligaments and and muscles they they don't do any foundational uh, things to you know injury proof their body it just it's so prevalent in endurance sports in general um, to think you have to look or be afraid to be stronger or bigger um, but if you look at some of the better athletes and like how they're built and what they can withstand they're you wouldn't look at them and think they're weak and fragile and feeble. You would look at them and think, man, they look solid. Mm-hmm. Like, they just look strong. And being strong is important in so many aspects of life, but also in terms of longevity. You know, it's like longevity is is is, is such an important part of this, and it is something that will rob people of, you know, what you said at the beginning of this little go-off was that, you know, that's why a lot of people probably stop doing it. You know, it's because they they get into triathlon because they want something that stops beating themselves up, and then they become so weak that they that they just continually beat themselves up more. Then they just stop because they're not as durable anymore. Oh yeah, man, that's weird that you said that because my head was just going into this, and especially when you're uh, as you age in the sport and in the age in life in general, the thing that I've always heard is a common denominator is you need to incorporate strength training because your muscles start to, you know, go. And the best way to, to, um, to keep healthy and to keep your bones strong and things like that is to do, to weight related or, you know, you know, lift heavy things or keep lifting things instead of, uh, maybe, you know, too much aerobic activity versus you know in a in a balance or ratio that the thing about getting older is you have you get your muscles start to atrophy and things like that and you want to work them and keep working them and that gives you more longevity and Mm -hmm. uh and yeah so i'm I'm, you know maybe that's the thing is running hills in in the woods or mountain biking up strong where you have to really be you know executing more of that strength and leverage and power game may make you happier and healthier. And I think you're dead on with that. As I think you, sometimes people probably just get, you know, beat down and they can't, you know, 
and, and how many times do you think, uh, has this ever happened to you or have you seen this happen where somebody has really hasn't been feeling great or thinks that they're losing their triathlon or whatever and then they go out and do some kind of superhuman attempt at like proving to themselves that they still oh, got God. it and then the yep. next thing you know they have just dug the the final hole for the triathlon casket mm-hmm. you know happens what I mean? all the time uh so that's the i guess at the bottom line is of a well-rounded you know strength and fitness approach in the sport everybody would like it's and again it all just comes back down to the preparation is is not near as fun it's just not i mean you know i um, would be lying if i said oh but it's the hard work and the little things and taking the extra time to get in those few extra runs or hitting the hill you didn't want to hit or doing the big gear work or heading down the mountain bike or or doing a long hike or a slow run on some trails like that stuff's a blast but yeah. <laughs> it's the reward in being able to do these things that make the biggest difference and why you say oh, i just i just can't seem to keep it i just always get hurt i'm just because we all know that person who's literally always hurt mm-hmm. uh They've never had a season because they're always hurt, but it, it all comes down to little things, and you can either choose to do them or choose not to do them. Um, but so much of, of the ability to, you know, it's like the same. This that's why the, so many good quality coaches and, and information analysts will say, like, when people are so scared to not be at race weight. You know, like they want to, they, they like obsess over their weight on the scale 24 7 and they don't want to fluctuate more than like one or two pounds. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a reason that that you're not supposed to stay at a specific weight if that, if it is in fact your ideal quote unquote race weight year round because it's just not sustainable. Like, you just can't do it. Like, I, th- I, I think personally, like, you see it in Kona a million times. Like, athletes come in so super skinny, or they come in way too frail and fragile because they've tried to hold together this level of fitness and pounding and demanding on their body with little, with the as little structure and an shock absorption ability as possible. It's uh, photo ops, man. It's, well, it is. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I won't, I won't say it, but there is an athlete that I'm close with who said that you'd be surprised that more the majority of the athletes in Kona are more concerned with how they look for the underpants run than how they perform on race day Hmm. and that is just I mean but Freud did have a field day with that one man. oh totally but (laughs) think about it from like a weight weight management standpoint yeah well there's there's a reason why they say like right now like it's good to carry it's good to it's good, G O O D. It is good to carry a little bit of extra weight this time of year, because we all know that as you shed a little bit of weight, you obviously run faster and you can you can climb hills faster in cycling, all those kind of things. When you train your body to run a seven and a half minute pace or eight minute pace or a ten minute pace at your current body weight in the fall and the winter, when you when you may be totally common to be seven to 12 pounds heavier than you would be maybe at, you know, during close to your biggest race of the year. It's to me, it's like, it's like weighted strength training, honestly. And I think that's what it's good for and what it should be used for. So you go out and you train your body to run, you know, like I said, any, you're, you're, you're a good solid eight minute, 10 minute, whatever, 11 minute pace with X amount of weight at your, over the fall winter months, well, as the spring and summer comes and you start to shed a little bit of that weight, guess what happens? You're your ability to, you're exactly your ability to run faster and run quicker and more efficient is it's gonna seem easier, but your body has done your body has done all of its work carrying extra load. So oh, it, we see that all the time with like guys that are huge and Oh, they lose a lot of weight, and their legs are so strong, and they're great right. cyclists. Yes. Yeah, so you see what I'm saying? Like your, it's like pre- your body is preparing to withstand X amount of, uh, you know, 
hard work and X amount of, of a pounding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's that carrying it in a balanced way sort of thing. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Um, I, I, I would like to say one little thing about injuries, and I tell people all the time that since I've gotten into triathlon, I've really begun began to understand injuries a lot better and i wish i knew what i knew now back when i was a baseball player in college Mm -hmm. because i would not have been such a wimp first because what has happened is all these things especially when i was new in the sport i would i would i would worry so much about injuries and upon experience and reflection i realize that so many of these things are just inflammation tweaks or some kind of you know like you call a niggle all the time or whatever and the difference between injury and a little bit of of soreness or pain is 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 clear to me is substantial and i just think that i i like to point that out because um i used to sit out practices all the time in baseball because i had like a "Quote unquote sore knee," but those are the things, or maybe not the knees, the right. You know, I don't want to screw around with like people that actually have legit injuries. But I just think there's so many little pains in this sport that kind of keep us back. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, those are the kind that you feel every time you start running. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like uh, you can be out like a half mile in and go, "Oh, what the heck was I, Jesus? <laughs> what was that thing?" And then you start Seriously. limping. And you're like, "Oh, maybe my hammy's screwed up." And the next thing you know, you're walking back home. You got a hammy injury. Well, just kind of, you know, I'm. You know the the difference here. I'm not telling you to run through a torn hamstring. Yeah. But if you feel something and kind of walk through it, it's just amazing how the body just sort of was like, "Oh, okay." forget about that thing and and you can in this warm up or whatever it becomes and you just say had talked about injury proofing your body or whatever and i just think that don't overreact yep you know i'm the guy that got a lot of shit for telling people to never walk on the run <laughs> because <laughs> so i'm gonna say this is you're probably not hurt as much as you think either man it, those, little, those little pains are like are a phenomenon to me because yeah, like, I'll have them sometimes when I go running, and I'm like, holy crap, like, this is about to take, I'm about to lose a foot. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a, you know, it's a, you that is it, too. I, I get them, like, maybe once a week, I'm like, what, what the heck is this, like, excruciating pain? I know, but now do but you I just, laugh I just, at them? I just keep running, and, like, 30 seconds later, it's just, like, totally gone, never, it's like it never happened. I know. That it's just so- totally weird, I think, I don't know if it's, like, from all the years and years of mileage or getting older or whatever, but it's just like, it's just so weird. But Somebody um, needs to explain that to us. Is it like the rush of blood going through a little inflamed capillary or something, you know, weird? Uh, I'd really like to know the answer to that because that... That it, just what you said is so funny to me. I just start laughing now. I'm like, that, that cannot be seriously what that feels like right now. It feels like my leg is going to cave. Yeah. It's it's the weirdest thing. I know people know what we're talking about. Like you know, it's this you know we talk about like the phantom taper pains where all mm-hmm. of a sudden you like wake up and you you swear to God your ACL is torn. Oh yeah, and you're like lumping like ah, oh, dude, I don't know if I'll be able to race on Sunday. I'm like, <laughs> well, what did you do? I'm like, nothing, dude. I had the day off yesterday. <laughs> you know, like watch Netflix. Woke up and all of a sudden my body is like in you know revolting against me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is. It's just like you're, you're, the body is such a it's such a crazy thing. You just you have to listen to it, but you can't. You know, little things like that you can't adopt as, um, you know, as fact all the time. But you know, I think you know, there's the general consensus. You know, is like do everything that you can to injury proof. Not not just injury proof your body, but to create a machine that is able to actually use all the tools you want to work hard to achieve it you know to to be able to achieve yeah like, a functional don't just, machine yeah just to be a, a total functional machine and yeah, i would argue that, well, that needs, rounded, part of that is mind your mind training too you know oh it does but it's just like you to you just need to be a well 
rounded athlete. Because the more well rounded an athlete you can be, not only I think this is the part that people miss. Not only is a well rounded athlete going to allow you, I think, to, to continue to be in this specific sport for a long period of time, it also gives you the confidence to open so many other doors to explore. Whether it is something like a trail running mm-hmm. or mountain biking or an ultra run or a long open water swim or, you know, a double century, but whatever it is, like the more well-rounded you could be, the more opportunities you give yourself. And going back to like not taking ourselves so seriously and letting fear dictate the decisions that we make. Cause I was, I, I do like consultation phone calls with athletes sometimes like on the mental aspect of the game of triathlon and decision-making and, and working through just like, the things that people, the way people think. And I had a conversation yesterday with, with someone and we kind of got down to it. And and so much of it, so much of it is that we also lack self-confidence in certain areas. And I was joking. I said, for someone who was so, who lacks so much self-confidence, you're 100% totally confident. You can't do this. (laughs) That's good. But just think the, the the truth though for uh-huh. so many people that have like so many self doubts about themselves and what they can or can't or it's about what they can do and they and they're to, they're totally confident their bravado is off the charts for what they ah, I just can't do that. But then every other aspect they're like they have like zero self confidence. But they're one hundred percent totally confident about what they can't do. But they have no confidence about what they can do. Mm-hmm. And I was sharing a little bit with this this person as well about the kind of mountain bike conversation you and I were having. It was that so many of it is just that I can't or I won't be good at it or I won't be able to do it or what if I do and I get hurt. So what? The the, <laughs> the, the thing for us is like just go do it. Like you, you can't spend your whole life and you know, I don't I don't know like what statistic it is about our brain that they say like, you know, the average human only uses 6.9% of their brain capacity, but whatever it is, it's super low, you know, because they say like, we just don't use the intellect or your memory or whatever it is to its fullest extent. Your body is the 100% exact same thing. I bet you that very, 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 very few people, a very small percent, less than 1%, you know, 1% of 1%, of people get to be the age of 60 and 70 and say, and look back and think, I definitely reached the peak of what my body was capable of doing. We just don't, we just don't get there. And it's sad. It, it it is, it honestly is sad that we never, not that we don't get to walk around with a, you know, a sweet looking chest and six pack abs and, you know, pipe arms looking like the rock 24 seven, or you don't get to walk around. I don't know, even know what women look up to these days, but you know, the, the real good looking one, whatever. Um, Kardashian. No, God, no. <laughs> like, come on, out. man. Please, isn't that it? Please censor that one out. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, there's no amount of dumb. In- yeah. We're not going to go on that one, I- but it's not about what you – it's not about – and I don't mean that in terms of the way you can look. I mean that in terms of allowing yourself the abilities to do what you – to do things because at the, at the heart of it all, yes, we're triathletes, but on the most part, we're experienced junkies. We want to experience things because it goes – because experiences go beyond sport. Doing sit-ups is, an ex- is not an experience. You might be able to experience walking around and people being jealous of your, your crop top and your guns, your guns and your abs and your perfect look, quote-unquote perfect looking body. But A, is it a perfectly functioning body? And what exactly are you doing with it? Are you going out and doing things you never thought you could do with it on your, you know, in, the, in the open water where you're swimming, cycling, running, going off-road, doing all these things and like – we gain like the amount of wisdom and 
maturity and confidence and like self discovery that you gain by being able to go on these these journeys and and having the strength and removing the fear to go on them like what you learn from that is is priceless yeah but we but rob ourselves of those opportunities by convincing ourselves that we can't that we're not fast enough that we're not strong enough that we'll never be like that or i have to look like <sighs> this to do x and the fact of the matter is is you just have to want to and then you just have to go do it and it is totally that simple yeah so we talk about community all the time in our group the c26 community and how that has just been amazing to be around and uh our athletes are are just super cool and and you know what but there's a few there's several guys in there that i have met through what we're doing and they're working with us and whatever and they're my age group and we're getting older as we all know well, we all are but you know we're in the 50s and so you know some are some of us are in mid 50s and moving on up and we've been talking the last few days and after the couple you know i talked about my race report and my disappointment and whatever and it's kind of comical man that we're all just sitting there going look we're not ready to give in to this you know we're we're going to get faster we're thinking about you know next year's prs prs and you get around these people and I and I've always thought that that's why more and more people uh, are doing Ironman is because you start seeing your people you know it's like your buddy does it and you're like man I can do it they did it I can do this mm -hmm. whatever so that is a great thing and then now all of a sudden I'm with these guys that are mid fifties and we're getting up there and it's so funny to me to think about mid fifties when I was a kid it's like my grandpa mid fifties man it's like <laughs> what. That dude could barely walk to his car. Oh, no, dude. And, well, just, do you remember how big you thought you were when you were a, like a senior in high school? Yeah. And now I look back, I'm like, those little millennial runts. I know. It's just such a weird... I think that... Uh, well, I mean, obviously, you know, the internet has changed the world. And it, it's just... These are the things we see more and more and you start to believe them you know um, mm -hmm. it's just that you know things used to like you know whether it is something like uh you know canceled swims or or people getting hit on a bike or these or or people finishing you know scaling you know doing two iron men one in two days or whatever you start to see that stuff all the time and you're like man i can buy in you know Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not as rare and weird. And before, you'd probably never heard about a lot of these things, you know? Yep. Uh, but they were happening. And, and now it's just that everybody, including your, your neighbor and brother and sister, and uh, everybody's doing stuff. So I don't know. I guess the point is, is as you get older, I think that the, the, the new bar just keeps flying up the, up the ladder. It's crazy, isn't it? It is, man. It's like I seriously am going – I'm going to try and, you know, next year. I have no doubt in my mind that if I do things right at another age in middle 50s, I can go the fastest I've ever gone on an Ironman course. Yep. Uh, there's no question in my mind. I don't think there's a question in your mind either. I told you that. I That's told you point. as much on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just wanted – I needed another little reinforcement. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> You're working me here off the clock and on the clock. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. So let's let's stop uh and I, I really do believe that it's these little pains that we let take over our lives sometimes. Uh I, I mean I I know a lot of people, ah, uh, yeah, this is that, not in the, maybe in the sport, but friends or whatever that aren't in the sport or whatever that aren't familiar with a little bit of pain. Mm -hmm. Let's get through it. You know, if it's not a severed artery or, you know, like a, a tendon that's hanging out of your, you know, it, it might not be that as bad as you think. And like your body might need <laughs> Unless to, your tendon is hanging out. Yeah, yeah you know what bad. I'm saying, though. It's I just, do, I think man. a lot, I think a huge, huge part of, majority of people in this uh, world will sit around and feel sorry for themselves because they, once they get off the couch, you know, that it's like getting out of the car after a race or any time you get out of the car or after sitting at a desk for a long time, you get up and you're like, Jesus, man, I am out of shape. You could have just 
done, you know, a six hour ride the day before, you're in perfectly fine shape. But you get out of a chair after sitting there and it's this mysterious, feels like you're in the worst shape of your life for about three minutes until mm-hmm. you walk that stuff off. I just think people get sucked into that, like that, and believe that more so than they believe other good things that they do. Um, you know, we I think we said this on Monday's podcast. We you did? become you. You become you are your thoughts. You become what your no, not your thoughts. You become the story you tell yourself. Yes. Yeah, that's. A and good. I know people like that who just like they would. They just might as well rename themselves. You know. Uh, bicep bicep tear because they've always got something <laughs> they've always got something wrong with always it's the same thing ah just ask ah, ask ah, ask ah, ask got this ah, ask got this ah but i've had them like dip whatever man you know it's uh but they just they they identify so much with this niggle or this injury that they that they it becomes their identity because the the amount of time you identify with that is um is the, the the longer you identify with something, the more it becomes your identity. For good, for good and bad. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I want to because I could see like how people would be like, oh, you know, get upset. And I just want to be clear, like if it's a seri- a real injury, go for it. But I mean, and and take care of it and take care of yourself and everything. It's just that. Um, I I, I think there's power in being able to kind of move on. Yeah, I hear you, man. Uh, it's it again. I'll t- I'll say, <laughs> it's the funny. After Iron Man Louisville, I went to breakfast that morning. I think I told this story before, but it fits right here. Is I sat for breakfast. I felt fine. I limped a little bit to breakfast. I sat there for an hour, and I got up, and I thought my left Achilles was honestly getting stabbed by like two different two or three different people it was like <laughs> the most incredible i could not walk i i had to stop maybe five or six times walking back across the lobby to the elevator and i was just cracking up because i'm like where did that come from man? <laughs> it was like the most excruciating pain unwalkable pain i've ever felt since i've been in this sport and i was like that feels serious but then two hours later I put like this wrap on it, warmed it up. It was just cold or something, you know. I put, I, I warmed it up and uh, it was gone. It was weird. I don't know. I don't know why that fits, but it's just all food for thought. If you really like this podcast and you want to keep it going and help support us, uh, we have over 200 po- 212 podcasts now. Every Monday and Thursday, you can support us on a monthly basis by going to patreon.com slash crushing iron. We have a couple different tiers. One is three dollars and twenty six cents. One is thirteen twenty six. Or you can really, you know, go all the way and do whatever you want to donate um, and pledge to us. Uh, we have coaching information. Oh, at crushingiron dot com. <laughs> you all right? You said like you said one of those phantom pains. <laughs> phantom Jeez. brain fart cramp. Man. Dude, no kidding. Well, it just reminded me of something that I thought maybe we were thinking about doing today. Yeah, uh, we are definitely going to do that. But Man, go we ahead. are the kings of marketing. We put this like an hour buried, our newest, No, greatest, let's, let's greatest do it next thing. week and we can launch it with it. Let's just do it next week and launch it with it. Can we Can we re-record it now and just put it at the front? Yeah, yeah, you, you can do that. Nah, let's just do it on Monday. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll launch our exciting new program on Monday. Yep, man, I promise. That's a double tease because I think we teased it on Monday. That's all right. It's just that's what the they do things these days. The old double tease. (laughs) So make sure to tune in Monday to hear about our exciting new opportunity within the C twenty six community. Yep. It's uh, it's a good one. I'm excited about it. But yeah, we'll we'll launch it and we'll just kind of go in depth into it on Monday with. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. Okay, go for it, man. Drop it. Part of it entails having more or having conversations with me, personal conversations with me. And that's priceless, if you ask me. Whoa, what? You mean we're just going to be talking, shooting the breeze, and like getting yeah. to the bottom of it? Mike Trolley Hotline. Mike Trolley Hotline. 
One eight hundred hot mic. Hey, that fits. One eight hundred hot mic. I'm yeah. buying it right now. I'm gonna get online and buy that real quick. Google yeah. number. Uh, you want me to hold off on the One eight hundred hot mic. Uh, Two ninety nine a minute. Dot com. For your first minute and twenty eight dollars a minute after that. Um, yeah. T- it's not like that. Trust me. No, no, so no. So don't be no, giving no, any it's, ideas. It's, no, <laughs> unless you're an available lady in the, the age lady. of thirty five and eighty five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bumping up your range up there. Uh, you're whining and opening. Like, this hey, listen, I'm just trying to help you. Out, help, man. Man. You Let's slide that slider way out to the more edges. Fish, more fish in the pond for you. Um, what else? But you no, got? Yeah, it is. We're on, in all seriousness, we're, we're excited about it to open up the doors to hopefully helping a uh, wider, wider range of athletes with different abilities and access to different things um, to continue to help people and grow our community. So we're, we're excited about that. In the meantime, you can check out all the things that we do and we offer on the website, crushingiron.com. Uh, and if you have specific questions for Mike, uh, you can contact him, crushingiron at gmail.com. Or if you have uh, questions for me, you can always hit me up, c26coach at gmail.com. Yes. And you're taking athletes now, or how's that going? Yep, uh, I've got a few spots open for athletes uh, at the moment. Um, so if you're interested, hit me up, um, and I'd be happy to chat with you about anything and everything. Not even toll free, just straight call. Straight call. Yep, straight call. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess that's it. If you want, uh, you know, follow you to follow us on YouTube and. That's fine. <laughs> You're struggling today, too. I am? Uh, yeah, well, just follow us on YouTube. No, uh, I, I just think uh, it's kind of like, I, I, it's all comes back to like, I, I just can't go over the top with fakeness. You know, right. it's like YouTube is probably the main place that we're actually doing things that might be worth it at this time. Although we, you know, we show flashes on the gram. <laughs> You do. I'm I show flashes on the gram, and I have ideas and thoughts about that. It's just that they haven't been executed on a consistent basis, and I know we talk about consistency a lot, so that, you know, maybe I should start getting with it. But So C26 underscore triathlon on the gram. Yeah, I can feel a one-star iTunes review coming off of this one. You can? You know, from 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 somebody who, you know, wants us to be super structured with perfect sound quality and go smooth as silk sorry buddy we ain't you um we ain't got uh, it but, uh, I, th- we'll I think see. it sounds pretty good today i do too and uh i do too uh good luck to everyone racing this weekend i know a lot of uh athletes racing like the monumental half and full marathon that's an indie it's in indy you got also iron man florida new location new day on sunday in haines city good luck to all those athletes competing uh, I know it's been a crazy past two or three or four weeks for everyone who's registered for that race with the hurricane and the change in venue and the course and all and accommodations, everything. So best of luck. Uh, we wish you, we wish you well, have fun, smile, stay patient, and, uh, we'll see you on Monday. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you. All right, man. See you, dude. Yep. Down, 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 down.